there will be better communication. But we've heard that before, haven't we, from the Glazers? Yeah, well, I pulled up a, a quote from Joel Glazer on the MUTV when they bought the club in 2005. Um, I'll read it out to you here. Fans are the lifeblood of the club. People want to know what's happening. We will be communicating. And then they didn't speak to us until two weeks ago. I mean, it's just, it, sh it shows you that that there, that quote at the beginning was almost just like, we'll come in, we'll get, get in under the carpet. And then it, it shows me 100%, bearing in mind what they've done when they tried to do the Super League a couple of weeks ago, it shows me that they thought they were buying a franchise or something they could turn into a franchise. They don't realize that they bought a, a, a club that is steeped in history. And a huge part of that is being part of the community. What is the cost of lies? It's not that we'll mistake them for the truth. The real danger is that if we hear enough lies, then we no longer recognize the truth at all. Over the years, you've watched me do videos on exposing the Glazers' strategy, exposing Ed Woodward, exposing the Glazers, left, right and centre. And I won't stop that. I'm just going to get louder. And we are just getting started. And that video there, that voice over there from Rio Ferdinand, highlighting the lies that we've heard from the Glazers. Direct communication, they promised back in 2005. 16 years later, we actually heard from them. And in the last month or so, there's been two direct open letters from Joel Glazer to Manchester United fans after nearly two decades of silence. And inside those letters were lies, hot air and lies. And what I want to do in this video is point those lies out and expose them because we're not taking it anymore. Like, it's not as if we've taken it at all since the start, but we're not going away now. There is no apology that can heal the wound that's being created in this last month. And that's what this video is intending to do, is to point these lies out because it's just bullshit for United fans to be fed them. And I don't think it's fair. So uh, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. I do loads of this type of content. I'm gonna continue banging this drum until the Glazers hopefully sell. But let's talk about these letters. The truth that we're, we were told. Our new owners, the bastions of Manchester United that care about the club. They don't, they never have and they never will. So let's go back to the first letter, dated the 21st of April from Joel Glazer to United fans in response to when United pulled out of the European Super League after they were forced to because of the backlash, not because they chose to, because they were forced to. And I'm gonna pull out paragraphs, pull out points that I think just need talking about. And this is the first one, here from Joel Glazer. You made very clear your opposition to the European Super League and we have listened, we got it wrong and we want to show you that we can put things right. Now the reason that pisses me off is because all you needed to do was communicate with fans and you would have realized that this was never gonna work. But that in itself is the lie. They don't care that they've listened, that they've got it wrong. They did not get it wrong. They got it right for what they wanted. As Rio put it there, they genuinely thought they were buying a franchise. I think the European Super League was the culmination of a 16 year plan that the Glazers had that has blown up beautifully in their faces. So don't try and tell us that we got it wrong and we wanna put things right. As far as you was concerned, it was right. It's just that fans prove that you just can't do what you want with Manchester United. Let's go on to the second point. And Joel Glazer goes on to say, in seeking to create a more stable foundation for the game, we fail to show enough respect for its deep-rooted traditions. Promotion, relegation, the pyramid, and for that, we are sorry. Bullshit. Again, more lies. Talking about how they were trying to build a stable foundation for the game. They tried to rip it up. Completely rip it up. They were doing the complete opposite. They were just trying to find guaranteed profit for themselves. Because I've shown previously, and you've watched it, the Glazers' strategy at Manchester United. It's abundantly obvious. Post Fergie, when Fergie was a genius that somehow managed to overachieve with the underinvestment, their strategy switched to a top four model. When you're inside the top four, you reduce spending the next year because you've got the guaranteed money from the Champions League, you hit, you hit a bigger profit. If the year after you don't reach a Champions League, the spending gets bigger because you need that guaranteed Champions League money. And that's why the European Super League appealed to them so much because they would have got that guaranteed, what was it 300 million a year for like 24 years? That's what the Glazers wanted, not stable foundations for the game. So don't feed us that bullshit. Next point here. 
We also realize that we need to better communicate with you, our fans, because you will always be at the heart of our club. This is such a crock of shit. I don't think they believe their bullshit uh, because they don't, they never have, and they never will care about Manchester United in any way, shape or form. Not the club, not the fans, not the community, not the city of Manchester, nothing. They only care about their own pockets and they've proven that in their running of the club. If I really wanted to, I could make an in-depth, hour-long probably documentary about <laughs> just how obvious it is that they don't care about the club. But you already know that. I already know that. And Rio said there, look, 16 years of silence, man. 2005 is when they, take, they took over amid huge protests. And since then, they didn't speak to us once directly until they were forced to. And it's not a case of them caring in any way, shape or form. And it just, it, it aggravates me. It really aggravates me to see this and to hear this bullshit from them. So that's the, that's the first letter from Joel Glazer. It was dated 21st of April. And it only gets worse because on the 7th of May, the Glazers actually didn't think they would, I'll be honest. But they responded to uh, the fans forum that demanded a response within seven days after that was called the Emergency Fans Forum. And this is what Joel Glazer had to say. I already gave my immediate reaction to the, to the letter, which was a bit raw and it was a bit... I mean, I knew it was bullshit. Now I want to show you it's bullshit. I'm going to pull out some points from that letter. Here's the first point here. In particular, I want to acknowledge the need for change with deeper consultation with you as our main fan representative body across a range of important issues, including the competitions we play in. We also recognise the importance of fan and football interest being embedded in key decision-making processes at every level of the club. And we are open to constructive discussions on how to reinforce it at that principle. You want a constructive discussion? Here you go. There's one simple way to prove this. Eliminate the class structure that exists at Manchester United. Right now you've got class A shares and class B shares. You can't buy class A shares on the market. You can only buy class B. Who owns all the class A shares? The Glazers. It's a very simple method, Joel Glazer, for you to get rid of this open discussions, open to constructive discussions on how to reinforce that principle. Eliminate the structure. One type of share that fans can have, that the Glazers can have. Bring fan representation onto the board. Include United fans in the actual decision-making process. It's a very, very easy way to reinforce it, but you will not do it because it reduces your power at the club. And therefore, it's not in your best interest, which is the only thing that has ever mattered to you. Why not come out and say it? I mean, I know why you won't come out and say it, but it's abundantly obvious. And that's what this video is designed to keep reinforcing that fact. Doesn't matter how much you try and appease United fans, we're not going to listen. Next point. In addition, I want to reassure you that my family and I care deeply about Manchester United and feel a profound sense of responsibility to protect and enhance its strength for the long term while respecting its values and traditions. Fuck off. Next point. Success on the field must be underpinned by solid foundations off it. We have supported sustained investment in the team over many years, and that will continue this summer. I mean, come on. Lying. What happened to the, uh, the world record 80 million that we got for Cristiano Ronaldo? Was that put straight back into the team? A team which had reached three Champions League finals in four years and were winning leagues at the moment with one of the best teams in the world? Hell no, you gave us Obertan and Michael Goddamn Owen. Where was Sancho in the summer? Well, you decided that it wasn't good enough. It wasn't a good enough investment for United to make. What about back in Mourinho? You decided to pull out, undermine that relationship and it exploded in United's face. There are so many examples that I can pull out here to prove that that investment has just not been there. And it's all based around their strategy, which I have shown to you previously. If you haven't watched it, make sure you do. But again, it's such an easy lie to prove idiots. Next point. We recognise that we need to significantly increase investment in Old Trafford and our training complex to ensure that the club's facilities remain among the best in Europe. Among the best. Old Trafford is a shambles. The rise of City, Liverpool building a new stand, hell Chelsea even developing a new stadium. United are a shambles by comparison. And you want to talk about investment. 
Take that game last night, for example. Leicester City, United, at Old Trafford. Investment? How about the, the money that was spent on building a, basically a wall around Old Trafford to try and stop United fans from protesting, protesting sorry, to try and stop United fans from actually directly communicating their own feelings. Riot vans there, riot police, dogs, barriers, stewards. Thousands and thousands and thousands got invested into that last night and there wasn't even going to be a protest, you goddamn idiots. <laughs> How stupid can you be? It's going to be ahead of Liverpool. No wonder that, no, no, no doubt, sorry, they're going to try it again. But you want to talk about investment. It's amazing how quick United were to spend money there. And you're talking about investment. Look, Paul Hurst, last night, Old Trafford, it was raining. The press were getting rained on. And I hope that's a bit of a message to the press because there's obviously certain parts of the media which really still are not portraying this as the true story that it is. The underinvestment has been there for so long and it's allowed City's dominance to really establish itself in Manchester. Fergie would have won a lot more had the Glazers. Fergie might have been able to stop, or maybe not stop City, but delay it at least. But he wasn't backed enough towards the end. And that underinvestment created the conditions for the eight years we've seen prior, since, sorry. Don't talk to me about investment, man. Next point. To highlight some specific points, as one of the few European clubs listed on the public markets, we believe in principles of fans owning shares in the club. We have previously engaged with the Manchester United Supporters Trust on fan share ownership, and we want to continue and accelerate those discussions together with provisions to enhance fan, to enhance associated fan consultation. Again, prove it. It's all based around that share structure. Get rid of it. Prove that you actually want United fans involved. But the reality is, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what Joel Glazer says, or Avram Glazer, or any of the goddamn Glazers, because the damage has been done. The wounds are there. These letters are like trying to put a plaster over a gangrene-infected wound. It's going to do fuck all. The damage is done and the damage is irreparable. When the Glazers took the decision, and they took the decision, no matter how any PR will try and spin it, they took the decision for United to go in to the European Super League. Hell, Joe Glazer was the co-chairman, the vice-chairman of the whole European Super League. His statement was on City's website. He doesn't give a fuck about the club. He does not, and no member of the Glazer family ever has or ever will. So these letters are just lies. PR attempts to try and cover up the truth, but it's not going to happen. The protest that happened before the Liverpool game that stopped the Liverpool game from happening, they're going to happen again, whether it's before the Liverpool game on Thursday, whether it's another time, there's going to be more. We're not going away and it doesn't matter what happens this season. It doesn't matter what happens in the summer. Until the Glazers leave Manchester United, fans will not stay quiet. And that's a new reality. It's not even a new reality, but that's the reality that the Glazers have got to get used to. They created these conditions, the conditions which they now don't like, but we're going nowhere. To this video, as I said, I wanted to do it, a more in-depth video on that, on those letters, sorry, from Joel Glazer, because I don't like seeing fans bullshitted to, and I have to call them out on that. And I'll continue to do these videos. I'll continue to put as much pressure as I can on the Glazers. Make sure you do too. Get involved in the boycotts that's happening. You see it with Team Viewer. I think Melita is another one. Their trust pilot ratings are going down. But you do what you can do to keep exerting pressure on the Glazers. And I'll do what I can do with this channel and this platform. But make sure, as I said before, Make sure you please subscribe and get involved. The bigger you can make the channel, the bigger my voice can get and the louder, the, no the bigger the noise that we can make. And that can hopefully continue to make a difference. But let me know what you are. I know what you think about the Glazers. But let me know what you think we should be doing next that we aren't doing that maybe can make a difference. 